I'm going to talk through the practice test real quick. Let's see how quick we can do it here. Uh, one and two with finger thing. I put a Y right there only because F of X is really Y, four to the Y is X. Those are just a finger thing. The number three, plug in 256, log base four, 256, plug in the 164, plug in the square root 1024. This answer is four because four to the fourth is 256. This one, because 164 is flipped, it's going to be negative three. And this one, four to the fifth power is 1024, but because it's a square root, it's over two. Remember, bottom is the root. Number four, common log is base 10, natural log is base E. Just punch your calculator, log that, get that one, natural log of that, and get that answer. Um, graphing logs, um, don't forget our uh, number inside is the shift. It shifts your asymptote for you. Both times got shifted left, or this one got shifted left too, this one got shifted right too. Uh, always pick the point one to the right of your asymptote. Usually that point is one zero, but when you plug it in, I'll tell you exactly where to put it. Put uh, negative one in there. That makes your parentheses be one. Two to the zero power is one. So that whole thing is zero minus one. Zero minus one is negative one. That's your first point. Um, sorry, negative one, negative one. We plugged a negative one. Then make your parentheses be the same as your base. So put a zero in there. Uh, that makes that parentheses two. Two to the first power is two. So one times one half is one half, minus one is negative a half, so my second point is zero, negative a half. Connect the dots. Don't forget to describe what just happened, or your uh, translations and things, and don't forget your domain and range. Number six, same deal, it's base E this time. Uh, there's my new asymptote, remember always pick, start off with one to the right of the asymptote. That's three, plug a three in there, that makes that a one, uh, which means E to what power is one, the zero, so it makes this whole part zero, so that's four, so I'm gonna go one, four, there's my first point. The second point is whatever would make that um, just be the same as the base, because the base is E, I'm gonna plug in this right here. I'm plugging in, I lost it down here. I do not see, oh, right there it is. I'll plug in E plus two, because E plus two minus two is E. E to the first power is E, so that makes that be one. One times negative two is negative two, plus the four is positive two. So when I plug in E plus two, I got four. And you can plug in E plus two in your calculator and get the value if you want it. Okay, this one says, tell what changed from here to here. And what happened is the vertical stretched by three, but everything they gave me to describe, nothing changed. It just got steeper. That's all that happened. But number eight, because I had to shift down five, the asymptote's the same place, which means the domain's the same, the range is the same, end behavior, all that stuff is the same, except it does change my x-intercept. And the way you find the x-intercept is you put zero for the y which means you would move the five over, and you gotta solve for x, move the five over like that. And so that's basically asking you two to the fifth power is x. Two to the fifth power is 32, and that's it. That's the only thing that changes. Nine, 10, 11 is, doing, is working out the log. Um, the x part on this one goes in the front. Did that, three to what power is 81, the fourth power, so four times four is 16. This one, subtraction means division, 36 divided by nine is four, two squared is four, therefore it's two. Have addition, which means multiplication. Have subtraction, which means you divide. 60 divided by that is 16. 4 to what power? 16. 4 to the second power. 12 is a uh, exponential growth equation where they're growing money. We've done this a million times now, it seems like. I don't think it's kind of a big deal. Remember, the amount you end up with goes over here. The amount you start with there, 1 plus your rate, which is 12%. T is time. Start off dividing by 60. I add your parentheses. I did natural log. You can do the regular log if you want to. Got T is 18.7. This is what we did today, 13 through 16. I moved the seven over, divide by four, did natural log both sides, and got this and that. Move the one over, and got my answer. 14 divided by six, uh, do natural log of both sides, and I get natural log of eight divided by two. 15, 16, same way. Uh, put the X one in the front, divide by the natural log, move the five, move the three, got it. Um, number 16, move the 12 over. This one you can do regular log if you want, natural log if you want, doesn't make your choice. Uh, divide both sides by natural log six, move the nine over, divide by three, she ended up right there. 17, as exponential growth, because that two right there is bigger than one, your asymptote's been shifted down four. Usually our point that we use is up one from there, right on the y-axis, but because we've got a shift left two, I'm gonna use, actually use negative two for my x. So I'm going to plug negative 2 in there. That gives me 0. 2 to the 0 power is 1. 1 times 2 is 2. 2 minus 4 is uh, negative 2. So my first point is negative 2, 2. Pick the point 1 beside it, right beside it to the right, which is negative 1. 
We do plug negative 1 in there. That gives you 2 to the first power, which is 2, times 2, which is 4, minus 4 is 0, and I'm out of breath. There's my two points. Don't forget your domain and range. Uh, 18 is another one just like we did a second ago. It's, it's growth again because it gave you a percentage going up. Final amount, initial amount. Divide to get that. Do natural log both sides and divide. Get 14 years. 19 is uh, arithmetic because it's increasing by 8. And there's, a, there's the uh, recursive. Remember, F n minus 1 is recursive. There's adding 8 every time. I have 8 n minus 6 here. That's a shortcut. I, I really did this. But the shortcut is, whatever D is, is always going to be in front of your N. And then let's look at the first term. is 2. What would you do to 8 to get the 2? You would subtract 6. That's the shortcut for explicit. If you don't want to do that, you can just plug all your numbers in here, but make sure you work it out. 20 is geometric. There's the explicit formula for geometric. It's the first term times R to the N minus 1 power. And there's the recursive, 1 half times the previous term. 21, pretty good one right here. Work inside first. What I did in here is I subtracted the exponents. 5 thirds is really 10 sixths. 10 sixths minus 5 sixths is 5 sixths. I still have the 9 fifths out here, and what I notice is the 5s cancel. When you raise a power to a power, you multiply. Those 5 cancel, give me 9 sixths. 9 sixths is really 3 halves. Bottom is the root, top is the power. The square root of 16 is 4. 4 cubed is 64. 22, I squared the top. 5 squared. If you raise a power to a power, you multiply, that's two-thirds. Uh, I have an x down here, so I subtract. Five-thirds minus two-thirds is three-thirds, which is just one x on the bottom, one y down there. Twenty-three, just a matter of factoring and flipping stuff and canceling. So I factor at the bottom here, x plus five, x plus three. This one I flipped and factored. I took the x minus five to the top. I factored the top down here, and I started canceling. And all that left was two x minus fives down here. The whole top canceled. When that happens, you get one. 24, the exact same kind of problem. I took a 2 out of the top, kept factoring it some more right there. The bottom, I took a 2 out also, kept factoring it down here. This one, I flipped, factored it, canceled stuff. That's what was left. 25, 26, uh, graphing fraction stuff. Don't forget, and this is a list of all your asymptotes. The vertical asymptotes, what makes the bottom 0, so I wrote x is 2 and drew it. The horizontal has three rules, remember. If the degree is the same, it's leading coefficient over leading coefficient. So it's 4 over 1, which is right there. I punched this in my calculator to see where my graph went. That's okay. Don't forget your domain. Domain, you can write in range of very short. This means all x such that x does not equal 2 because that's where the asymptote is. All y such that y does not equal 4 because that's where the asymptote is. Same thing on 26, except I factored the bottom. There were two vertical asymptotes. When I factored it, one at negative 4, one at positive 1. And this is another rule for horizontal asymptote. When the bottom degree is bigger, the asymptote is zero. And I punch it my calculator to graph it, and I got that right there. And then there's my domain and range. 27 said is x minus 1 a factor? Oops, I did the wrong thing on that one. I'm so sorry about that. I went and solved it. Let me do it right here. Is x minus 1 a factor? I did way too much work on it. Just put negative 1 in the box. And go through 1, negative 4, 6, 4, 5. And of course, if you get 0 on the bottom, then it's going to be 1. So you go 1, negative 1, negative 5. Actually, I did it right here. And I, let me point right here. I did it and I got 0. So yes, it is a factor. So I, put, I should put yes. And then you do have to go ahead and solve it. So this says find the other factors. The other factors are going to be what else I found. I found mm -hmm. negative 1 again. And then I found those two. So my two factors, all my factors are x minus 5 and x, um, minus, x plus 1 squared. There should be one more somewhere because, oh, x, I found the 1 also, sorry. So it would be x minus 1, too, because I found that one. So four factors. I just completely messed that one up. I'll talk about that tomorrow if you need me to. I'm sorry about that. 27 uh, says find p of 3 using, using uh, the last problem. So all you do is you put negative 3 in your box. And whatever your remainder is, that's what p of negative 3 would be. If you were to plug negative 3 in for all those x's, that's what you would get, 128. One five. Okay, 29 says expand x plus 4 to the 5th power. Don't forget all your patterns. Start with the x to the 5th. Your first coefficient is going to be the main exponent. Your x's start going down. Gosh, I messed that one up too. That's supposed to be 4's in there. I try to do this in a hurry. I'm so sorry. Those are supposed to be 4's in your parentheses there instead of 5's. But... Let's, let's just do this. Let's just act like that was a 5. 
and then my answer would be right. How about that? You can replace all my fives in that first line with fours and then work it out, and that's what you should get. I don't know what in the world's going on with me today. And number 30. Number 30 is a calculator problem. You want to know where they intersect. The solutions to a system are where they intersect on a graph. So I took this one, rewrote it into y equals form. I took this one, rewrote it into y equals form. Punched those into my calculator. Went to second calc. Number five says intersect, so I'm looking for an intersection. One intersection was right here. I did it again, except this time I traced closer to the other intersection. I did the same steps, second calc five, enter, 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 and I got two, negative six. So sorry about 29, and there was that other one I, I, I did too much stuff on. But other than that, it should be pretty good. We'll have maybe five to ten minutes of questions tomorrow, and then we'll take it. So hopefully you'll be ready. Study good. See you tomorrow.